Hi everyone, this is Camper Cooking with Chef Paul. We are Americans living in France who have always liked camping and eating well. Like many of you, we bought a camping car after the first pandemic lockdown so we could still travel safely. Chef Paul does most of the food prep at home so we can have more time to explore. He will show you how a classically trained chef prepares great food even with a camper's minimal kitchen utilizing historical and modern techniques. Let's make some lamb stew. I've got some, looks like some shoulder cuts of lamb from the Supermarché. Came a little pack of, looks like mostly rosemary. And I need some chunks of that. And I like size of, it's just gonna fit nicely on a big spoon. Of course, there'll be some shrinkage. Given a choice, I'm always going to cut along the lines of connective tissue. But I'm not too worried about trimming the fat off of it because most of this fat's going to going to denature and render out in the pot, and it's going to add a lot of flavor. Of course, if you were health conscious or something, then you might not do it. Now here you have that little piece of silver skin. I don't want that. That's undigestible. And I don't really need that big chunk of fat either. So I guess even as, as portly as I am, if it's easy to avoid it, I will. If it's easy to avoid adding a whole big glob of fat in, in there, I will. And you can just kind of follow the lines of the muscle and know, know where to cut it. A couple of lean pieces there. My wife will appreciate that. like I'm starting with 0.6 of a kilogram of lamb. So that makes it something over a pound. By the way, you could make this with the beef if you really wanted to, and sometimes I do. Obviously I'll change the seasonings a little bit. Might use a little less garlic and a lot less rosemary. Here's what I'm talking about. I'm using the right knife. And you know, most of that stuff that you really don't want in the meat just kind of wants to come off anyway. And if you use a flexible knife and a little practice, trimming meat like this gets really easy. making a, any kind of red meat stock I would just brown this off in the oven and add it right into my stock because the fat will come off when I render it anyway and if I had a dog I'd just fry this up or boil it and make a great treat but I don't have a dog all right there's my lamb there's a piece of connective tissue I'm probably going to wish I'd take that out see if I can just take that off now I used to season my flour the thing is I was throwing away a lot of flour because I always end up putting more flour than I need to on whatever I'm breading. So now I season the meat and add some flour to the top of it because the pepper is kind of expensive. Give it a quick mix, look at it, decide that having nine times as much pepper as a Frenchman would put on it just isn't enough. I 
got enough oil in there to cover the bottom of the pan I'm using as usual canola oil. I'm going to add about 50% more. So it's two parts canola oil, one part olive oil. So just grocery store, no name olive oil. Putting my stove on medium high. Now I'm back over, ready to finish off my meat. Just gonna sprinkle a little flour on. And it's not like I'm making a stir fry or something where it really needs to be coated evenly and perfectly. Or I'm making a saute where it's going to be the finished product that you see. Really, there's some kind of chemical reaction between flour, especially corn flour, and rice flour for that matter, that helps the meat become more tender as it cooks. Okay, I'm gonna let the oil heat up just a moment longer, but I'll go ahead and start working on vegetables. Today I'm starting with the vegetables we're gonna go into the pan first. So certainly carrots because they take the longest to cook and I'd like to have some of this for dinner in addition to vacuum sealing some for the packer, for the camper. And one thing I found that's neat is if I freeze the vacuum sealed packs pretty flat, when I get ready to go camping, I can pack some of those frozen things in the camper's refrigerator as I turn it on. Those kind of camping refrigerators typically take two or three days to actually get cold and I just don't want to use the burn that much gas while it's sitting out next to the canal. So what I'll do is put some frozen things in the refrigerator, put some, make sure I don't put any warm beer in there and everything, well it works really well. I can turn it on and go, go camping, everything's still cold when I get there and Usually my packs are half frozen, so that's what I'm going to plan to use this lamp stew. And there's nothing like stew on a cold night camp. Here I'm getting to the fatter side of the carrot. I'll chop some of those pieces down a little bit. Again, I want to make sure everything is comfortable on a spoon. Narrow side those. And I'm going pretty thick here. And it's stew, so I don't have to be real, real precise. Oh, I bet you my oil's hot. Now you might want to use tongs at this point. My fingers are pretty desensitized. Not going to hurt too much. Less some of the oil splatters up kind of high on my wrist and then I'll start to feel it. That looks really good. So everything's just cooking, but nothing's like going to brown off right away. I don't want to brown it too fast. I'd love to go right into the pan that I'm cooking the lamb in with these carrots and let them start caramelizing with the carrots. My lamb is just not quite ready yet. So for you Americans, this may not look super familiar, but if you start to look at the leaves that are coming off of it, you'll notice it looks vaguely familiar. This is celery root. And it's, I guess it's a cousin to the branch celery that I was used to in America. Um, or maybe just a different variety. And it has a lot of the same flavor. It's just that it is much, um, Takes longer to cook. Has a texture almost as hard as a potato. And all I'm doing now is I'm doing a rough peeling of it. This one's been in the refrigerator for a week, so it's not as pretty as I would like it. But I'm also starting a chicken stock tonight, so. I can certainly use all of the carrot scraps and potato. I hear my lamb sizzling in the oil, so I'm going to give it a stir and maybe I can sneak these carrots. So I've got my lamb turned for the first time. Got plenty of oil in there. Everything's cooking beautifully. 
I'm just going to sprinkle my carrots on top, but I'm not going to really stir them in yet because I want that I want the lamb to brown on the side I just turned it to. Next, I'm going to need onions. Let's say one onion per pound of meat. The onion peels are going in my stock pot. It's a lot easier to peel an onion if you cut it in half. sons who have lost mothers. Because I'm making stock, I can be even lost. super lazy and go take that whole layer so. there that I would normally be trimming and leaving some of that on the onion. to the end, I'll show you again. This one's a little smaller, so maybe only three times across. Here, that onion would be angling down towards my fingers if I want to slice it. So I'm just in the habit of kind of pushing it over and giving it a last slice there. And the reality is it also makes a more even cut. All right, I'm gonna make a pause and stir in my celery. Gonna, they're already half slices if I just cut them like that. And I think I really like the way that'll come out in the pan. some potatoes in at this point but I'm kind of tricked for that we're going to try something different I have these pre-cooked whole potatoes and I buy them for the camping car because it saves a lot of first of all just space because they're already peeled and all the bad places have been removed also it's just a convenience it's one less thing to cook one less pot to clean and these make pretty good parsley potatoes or french fries or hash browns or whatever it is you're going to make. Come with these mystery packets that the lamb came with. 
No, it's mint and rosemary. That'll be fine. I don't usually put mint in at this point, but we'll try it. it smells like there might be a little ground anise, which I'm definitely going to put in anyway. There wasn't enough of that to matter, so we're going to add herbs to Provence. One teaspoon, one and a quarter teaspoons. Quarter teaspoon of sage. Half teaspoon of thyme. A whole bunch of crushed chilies. Those won't go in my hand. See, I'm actually kind of give a nice covering to that. Fennel, that's about a half teaspoon. A scant half teaspoon. I would suggest a quarter teaspoon for you, but I'm a nut for it, so I'm adding a bunch. Eat some coriander. Electric coffee mill that you're not using for coffee works really great to grind spices, and they cost about $10. I'm adding some black pepper to the coriander now that it's about half done. A full tablespoon, maybe even more. So the coriander I want to be pretty finely ground, but the black pepper I don't mind having just cracked. Now it looks good. A bay leaf, two small ones. Way too much cayenne pepper. And this is just starting to stick a little bit. Nothing's burning, nothing's too toasty yet. But it tells me I'm ready. Hurry up and get to the next step. Need some tomatoes. It's a real challenge to find things like diced tomatoes. I really like canned diced tomatoes. Does it seem to you like there has to be a lot of waste in there? We need to get that out. I can die in any way the fates choose. That's not up to me. But what is within my power is to decide how I live. Courageously or timidly. Thought I was out of rosemary. I put rosemary in my lambs and in my beef stew as well. But I put maybe twice as much in my lamb stew. Okay, I want to come back to a, to a semi kind of fast because I want to taste it and adjust my seasonings now. It's kind of pointless to even taste it until it gets hot. Well, it's going to have some heat. That's a good thing. That's going to be pretty good. So I'm turning my heat down to about a three. And I'm going to put a little bit on. It's been an hour and a half. I can turn off the range now. Not a sticky spot to be found. It's time to eat. Then after I eat. I'll put some of this in vacuum bags. Freeze it. Then I'll seal it. 